Hey everyone, my name is Greg Hogg, and welcome back to this three-part series on collecting web data. In the first video, we talked about proxies and how they are a middleman between you and the server you're trying to access. In the second video, we talked about web scrapers and crawlers, essential automated technology that allows you to scrape and organize information from the web. In this third and final video, we're going to talk about real use cases and data delivery, going out there and actually getting the data that we've been talking about for so long. In this video, we'll be using the services provided by Bright Data the sponsor of this series. Now the first website that we're going to collect some information from is Google Maps. The majority of people probably just use Google Maps as a service to help them get to where they need to go. But under the hood, there is a lot of really cool information that Google Maps has. To scrape information from Google Maps, you would need something special called a SERP, Search Engine Response Page API. It's what's going to unblock this search engine results. You might be asking why we aren't just using Google Maps' API they provide. It is what Google's trying to give you to access Maps' information. Using an API, we'd still have the same issue we keep talking about. Google is going to give you the information that they want to give you based off of the request that they are seeing. But if you scrape this already public available information, well, you're going to have more freedom. Let's now jump into the Bright Data tool, and I'll show you how to use their SERP API to collect information from Google Maps. Okay, so this is Bright Data's splash page. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. You can see here I've already made some free account. It's just a bunch of kind of anonymous letters. If we click on user dashboard, it's going to bring us into their integrated tool. Now, the first thing we're going to click on here is on the side, APIs and integrations, and we can click SERP API because that's what we're trying to do here. So again, SERP stands for Search Engine Response Page API, and you can see here we have all of the popular search engines, including Yandex, which I don't think I've even ever heard of. But under Google, we can have their search thing, and we have maps. So we're going to click on that, and then we're just going to scroll down and see that there's no preview yet. Okay, we haven't really done too much. And what we're going to do is select something like uh, Cineplex. It's basically the movie theaters. So if I click Cineplex and just click search, we can then scroll back down here. And it's going to take a little bit. Actually, that was really, really fast. Uh, and in JSON, we've collected all the different information about these Cineplex businesses. So we can see the title of what it's called, the display link, which is cineplex.com, the full on link to that particular one, which is you know basically the combination of Cineplex and their title. We have its address, their phone number, so the contact information, and so much different stuff about each of these different Cineplexes. Okay, I'm not gonna scroll through all the information, but there you go, it's all in JSON, and that was it. Like, yeah, I hope you see how quickly and easy that was. Doing that in a different way is probably gonna be a lot harder and running into many blocking issues. Another common site that we might want to scrape information from is Twitter. Twitter and other social sites follow a similar pattern. You have people, and all of those people know other people. It's a huge network of information, and it's it's really important to know how to scrape this information as well. An important distinction between Google Maps and a social site like Twitter is the idea of time. Time is really, really important for Twitter and you've got to get that in real time. For that, we'd use something called a webhook. Now, creating a webhook is really useful, but a little complicated, so I'm not going to do that here. But we are going to go into Bright Data's tool to quickly collect some information about a certain hashtag on Twitter. So back in the Bright Data tool, we're going to go over here to Data Collection Platform and then Data Sets. From there, we can see the Web Scraper IDE. Click Get Started, and it's going to load up a couple different templates to choose from. Now, given what we just talked about, probably not surprising, we're going to click on Twitter hashtag search. So we'll use that as a template, and you're going to see some JavaScript code here. Now, if you don't know JavaScript too well, I actually know it slightly. I don't know it too well. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to scroll down here, and we're going to input into this parameter hashtag something other than police. We'll go hashtag Elon, you know, something nice and controversial. Why not? And we're going to click preview. 
you'll see here it starts to preview. It will take a little bit of time for this to run. So you can see now it's actually going to Twitter here and it's actually searching hashtag Elon, which is really cool to see it in action. Okay, and you can see the information that it collected in this table here. So we see these tweets, we just see five items because that's what it's limited to, but we could easily change that if we wanted. Here we have five tweets and we have the author, the time, the post body, the amount of likes that they got, comments, shares, really, really useful information. And of course, if we wanted to download this as a JSON, you could do that right there. As our third and final example, we're going to use Amazon. As you know, Amazon has amazing information on product reviews, descriptions, and prices. It'll be great to do comparison for what you want to buy. Now, of course, Amazon is extremely popular, and it is one of the many, many sites that will definitely block you if you try to scrape its information. Of course, I'll show you how to get around that. So one last time, I'll hop into Bright Data's dashboard and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so this time we are going to head into the same location, Data Collection Platform, and then Data Sets. We'll click on the Web Scraper IDE, and we'll see that same template selection show up. Unsurprisingly, click on the Amazon one. It's going to look very, very similar. We can go down here and input. Here it requests a link to a particular product, maybe about a basketball. Okay, so off screen, I just picked out a basketball and I copied the link that's in the top and I will paste that right here. Now I do want to show you that this is actually from amazon.ca because I'm Canadian, that's the natural one it's going to send me to. It doesn't really matter which one because it's still going to go to Amazon and because we're using proxy like services, it's not really going to matter where you're coming from in general. So we're going to click preview and it's gonna do the same thing, start to load it at the top there. So as you can see, it kind of figured out that basketball page. The pop-out didn't quite work as I expected, so I'm not really gonna show you that, but here you go. So it's slowly going through and collecting like the description from the basketball and what we're going to see here in output very shortly. Okay, there you go. So it has that product ID number. It's got the title of what the basketball is, initial price and final price. Those might be different depending on like sales and different changes that might happen. There's a link to the image, review counts. So it's clearly been reviewed a lot. That would be very useful if you're trying to do some sort of automated product comparison as well as the rating, and maybe you can get some of the different specifications as well. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the series. We talked about proxies, what they are and why you need them. We talked about web scrapers and crawlers, and if you pair that with a proxy, you can collect some great information unblocked. And in this video, I showed you how to do it. I hope you learned a lot in this series, and let me know in the comments section if you wanna see any other videos on this topic. I'll see you guys later, and thanks so much for watching.